I'm joined with Tyrone Doherty from First Tellurium here at the Commodities Global Expo 2024 in Fort Lauderdale. Tyrone, thanks for joining us. Uh, it's great to be here. Thank you very much. So, Tellurium. Um, I happen to be a huge expert on Tellurium, so I'm glad you're sitting here. Perfect. Actually, that makes one of us. I, I actually know nothing about Tellurium. Uh, up until I saw the name of your company, um, I didn't even uh, know that it existed. So, uh, let's start at the very beginning. Sure. Well, Tellurium's a, a critical metal, both in the United States and Canada. Britain, Japan, Australia, eighth and ninth rarest metal in the world. And for our benefit, uh, we're the only company in the world that I know of, junior company, North America for sure, probably the world that's focused on tellurium. So while the other people are chasing all these other wonderful critical metals, we've had an advantage by getting two world-class properties and moving from there. And uh, the beauty of it is, you know, price of tellurium goes for $100,000 a ton. Okay. And if the price went to zero, it would basically have no effect on us going forward because we're actually, in fact, a high-grade precious metals property, but it's the tellurium that sets us apart. And for the educational purposes, tellurium is used uh, mainly in um, solar panels. The biggest company in the United States is First Solar, and they use it, a mixture of cadmium and tellurium. And uh, most of the others use silica from China. And one of the other uses has been uh, thermoelectrics. It's always been big in thermoelectrics. But our stock took a bit of a jump a couple years ago because the University of British Columbia came out with a lithium tellurium battery, which is far superior to a lithium ion battery. Uh, Global News in, in Canada and British Columbia did a dinnertime feature on it. My phone blew up, and we knew it was sort of coming, so um, we listed on the Frankfurt Exchange, figuring that the Europeans are farther ahead than us North Americans when it comes to green energy and green living. And so when it went out on the evening newscast two years ago, our stock, which had been trading between 15 and 18 cents forever, volume was 500,000 shares a month, not a day, a month. All of a sudden, the Global News does a story the next day. Our stock took off to uh, 71 cents, traded between 55 and 65 cents uh, a day on volume of two to five million shares a day, where we were doing 500,000 shares a month. So that's the difference. So what's the difference in the lithium tellurium battery? Five advantages, I've been told. Number one, it's much more powerful lithium ion. It's four to 10 times more powerful. Number two, easier to charge. Number three, lasts twice as long. Number four, size-wise. So if this is your lithium ion battery in your vehicle, okay, here's what UBC, UBC says, our lithium tellurium battery, you can measure between the thumb and the forefinger. So what does that do for weights in automobiles and airlines and so on? And the fifth and final advantage, it might be the most important, it cannot catch fire, cannot. So all these lithium ion batteries can and do catch fire. So if you imagine you have a vehicle that had no other advantages, a battery, as you say, no other advantages, only it won't catch fire, I think insurance companies, automobile companies, battery companies would be interested. So since then, uh, you know, we got excited and stock was doing very well for a month and I woke up at the end of February of that year and our stock plummeted. Uh, what the heck's going on? It was pre-market and that was the morning that Russia invaded Ukraine. So had that not happened, I think we'd be at much different prices now. So I forgot to mention I am the largest shareholder. I don't sell unless it's a gypsy swap. My wife and I own between 13 14%. I run one company at a time. My last company is called Quinto Mining. I took over in 1997, had a $4 million market cap. I was lucky enough to sell it 11 years later for $175 million. And we took shares in the company that bought us called Casale Thompson Iron Mines. We owned about 20 or 21%. And they sold two and a half years later for 4.9 billion. So our enterprise value is about a billion dollars, give or take, which is a pretty good thing. I was retired, mining's too tough, but you get opportunities like this, it's phenomenal. We're working with the US government and some other people. So what our, what's our claim to fame lately, our stock took off because we've uh, filed two patents in the United States and Canada for a new thermoelectric generator, which is far superior to anything out in the market. And we believe it can uh, replace the alternator in internal combustion engines. And uh, we're going from there. Okay, so Tyrone, let me stop you there and ask you this. We always hear about all these different types of batteries and in the junior mining world, you know how it is, everybody's running around promoting based on like some study that came out about yeah. some battery and yeah. you know we hear about sodium ions, something that we hear a lot about um, and I think uh, cattle is actually um, going to mass production on that. Um, one, of, one of the top things a few years ago that people were running around promoting was the vanadium flow battery. But we just, we just we're constantly hearing about these things. Yeah. Samsung recently yeah. announced, I, I'm not sure if it was semi-solid state or solid state, but mm -hmm. a 600 mile hour battery that charges in uh, nine minutes that uses a tremendous amount of silver. Um, so is anybody commercially close to actually taking this battery to production? or Yeah, University of British Columbia, they expect to have a, a prototype out at the end of this year, okay. a small scale, just to prove what they're having. So again, as I, I said to people all along, watch my YouTubes, don't believe a word I say. 
Like, trust me, if we say we've got this, we'll point you in a direction because you're right. A lot of people go around promoting and they don't have anything. You know, I run one company at a time and I make sure before we step out into the starting gate to start talking about our company, we have everything behind us, such as lithium fluorine battery. We've got the uh, National Science Foundation has been working with our, uh, with our inventor and expect to get a positive uh, reaction from them soon. And once you get two thumbs up from the National Science Foundation, all of corporate America turns to find out what they're, what they're behind. And there's so many things to talk about. As I say, I get 10 minutes to talk, 20 minutes to talk. I can't do it justice. But, uh, you know, we had, um, on our mining property, we had a preliminary economic assessment done in 2018 called it Robust Economics. I put that out in my news release and the commission wrapped me on the knuckle saying, Mr. Doctor, you can't use a robust, it's too promotional. Anyways, it was a uh, 1.6 year payback, 42% IRR after tax, and that was based on $1,300 gold and 17 silver. So to repeat, $1,300 gold, 17 silver, open pitable, metallurgy was done by tech 30 years before that. So we're sitting in a great position. My gut feeling is, as I've told everyone, I believe we're going to get bought out. I just don't know whether it's going to be the mining side first or whether it's going to be the, uh, the technology side first, I don't know. As long as people come with checks, it'll bounce, I'll be fine. Okay, specifically, what is the tech that you guys own? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a greater thermoelectric generator that uh, powers, like say we want to replace the uh, alternator in automobiles, but it can be used in uh, uh, greenhouses, for example, save the, the guy 30% on his bills. It can be used in solar at nighttime to, while the other solar is not working to collect energy. It can be used in drones, which is why I've had meetings with the Department of Defense. There's so many applications. But as a matter of fact, we put one out for emergency uh, two weeks ago. We announced it. Uh, so my inventor, Michael, lives here in Florida. And with the various hurricanes, he said, hey, why don't we do this? So it could be a, a device that puts out 200 watts, can you know, uh, charge people's phones, laptops, small fridge, and it weighs five pounds. So even an old lady can put it on her uh, balcony and not have to worry about struggling to get it up. It's uh, no moving parts and it's because of our two patents why it can be done. No one else in the world can do what we're doing because they use powder uh, tellurium that melts and all that and ours doesn't have that problem at all. Obviously I can't go into the details of it but Michael was an engineer for um, Toyota for seven years and he's lent out to General Motors. He built their robotic EV plants. So as I say to people, if he's smart enough for Toyota and smart enough for General Motors, I think he's smart enough for a little company like ourselves. So he worked on it for eight years, phoned me up, and the reason he called me is because most of the device requires tellurium. So if it wasn't tellurium, he wouldn't be phoning me, and we call ourselves first, first tellurium, but I joke we should be the first and only tellurium. Okay, so there's a lot of information there. Yep. I, I'm still kind of lost here. Specifically, what does what the technology do? It, it brings uh, power into whatever device you need. Right? People can take it to camping and fishing and plug in their iPhones and whatever, if it's just for recreational purposes. So it's kind of, it's kind of like a battery? Kind of like it, but not a battery, but kind of like it. So, power so. stuff out. You know, the basically, it's two sides. And you, if you want to talk to Michael, the inventor's behind me, but basically it's the difference between uh, one side is hot and one side's cold. As long as there's a te temperature differential, you get electricity. So, 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 so do you charge it? No, you just heat it up. Okay, so you just heat it up? Yeah, or it can be used on cold, so if the, if it would go cold to hot as well. So we showed our device in, uh, in Vancouver, and I must have failed grade 11 because I thought you only got energy from heat. And he said, no, it's actually put some ice cubes on it, and it lit up as well. As long as there's a differential in temperature, hot to cold or cold to hot, you get electricity. And by the way, thermal generators have been around forever. So this isn't something new. We've just built a better mouse, better mouse truck. Okay, so, so like theoretically, you, you have a device, yeah. just so I'm understanding it. Like, let's just say that Jordan and I here, we're out camping. Um, you got a butane heater, a propane heater, hit a button, and then it starts to heat, and then all of a sudden, the difference in temperature between that side to the other side, all of a sudden you get electricity, you plug in your iPhone, plug in your laptop, plug in a small refrigerator, whatever the case, and that's it. It's nothing new about, we haven't invented that, we just perfected it. Okay. Is, is there... No moving parts. No, no moving parts. No moving parts. And Solid steel, metal. Yeah. So okay. it'll last forever. And, okay, and so like theoretically, yeah. uh, Jordan and I here, we're out camping and yeah. Jordan likes listening to old timey music. Right. Uh, <laughs> are we talking classic rock or what are we talking? I'm talking real old time, some, okay. some, some real old time. Power those devices. Yeah, so, well, so I'm thinking he brings a record player in yeah. and we want to listen to it. So it almost sounds like we could build a campfire and heat it up. Campfire would be difficult. You need a solid thing, but you can come with a, like little butane 
last three hours, you know, it's like 100 grams, turn it on. It'll be a push button thing. So we, we, our demonstration here, we're, we got the cover un, uncovered and we're lighting it just to show people, but it'll be a push button and go, away you go and the heat goes in and then you apply, uh, plug in whatever you want to plug in. So, so is, is this tangibly more, um, like, like, like does it generate more power than what you get out of the, 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 the butane? Like, like, like how does... Yeah. Yeah, and again, you're talking the wrong end of the horse. I mean, the inventor's over there. But yeah, it's just, it's convenience for people, but also in terms when you can't get any energy, like in hurricanes and all that, that here you go, turn it on, at least you get three hours of, and then you can add more canisters if you want to make it more powerful. So we, we put out a news release three weeks ago now and said we get 20 watts of power, and then we announced last week we got up to 200 watts just by configuring a few things. We got 10 fold power, and it's just uh, limitless how far we go. Uh, it doesn't weigh much. And we'll see what happens. But our, our main goal is, uh, main function is going to be in the uh, automobile. If you can show internal combustion engine much more efficient and all those people waiting for EVs down the road, well, if we ever get there, I don't know, but if, we can, if you can save 2 or 3% on, on the efficiency of an auto, uh, internal combustion engine, you're doing well. And we think we can do that quite easily. And we're just uh, retrofitting a, a car right now. It should be ready to go in April, maybe March, but probably April drive around the city of Orlando with the first tellurium wrapping and our pyro delta, which is a subsidiary, and then we'll see what happens. Because it will change the automotive world. So, uh, Too good to be true. I'm going to be honest with you, Tyrone. I'm yeah. sitting here. I'm either talking to a crazy guy. Correct. Um, perhaps, and, and, and maybe these things aren't mutually exclusive here, right. but um, I'm either talking to a crazy guy or I'm talking to a guy who uh, is uh, going to change the world with some technology. Well, I would say it's probably the, the latter because I am the largest shareholder. My wife and I just bought another 3.8 million shares last Monday in the private place. We just closed the first tranche. So if I'm crazy, it's uh, you know, the way it is. But I've always believed it's better to be ahead of the game. And when you have opportunities, you know, everyone's always got their objections. And that's just fine. Thank God, goodness for guys like that. So when they object, guys like myself, they, say, they see the vision say, okay, here's where we go. And I don't waste my family money, so. Where's, where, so where, where's the car being retrofitted? Did you in say, Sam, in, in Florida? Yeah, at Michael's uh, shop. Okay, interesting. Um, well, look, uh, once you guys have it up and running, we'd, we'd love to come and uh, may, maybe uh, do some video content. And, uh, yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, and see if you are crazy or onto something. Yeah, or hopefully crazy rich. <laughs> That'd be the best combination, you know, we'll see. Well, well Tyrone, um, uh, I gotta be honest with you, this is certainly the most interesting conversation we've had, and uh, hopefully in five years, yeah. we can replay it and be like, uh, Steve thought that this guy was nuts, and it turned out that he uh, yeah. this is the next Elon well, Musk. Well, that's what we did in February, we brought Michael up just to tell our shareholders, he brought the little device, and I said to people, hey, I think, you know, you might want to take, take a picture. He said, I was here in Vancouver when it sort of got launched, and the uh, partner with the University of British Columbia on a lithium tellurium battery, he was at the conference to talk about the battery, but he came up and to give his impression of this thermoelectric device, and he basically said, these guys have knocked it out of the park. In 40 years, I've never seen anything like this. So it's him saying it, not me, so we'll see. But well, there's so many people demanding, not demanding, asking for prototypes, we're not sending it to them because we don't want reverse engineering. We've got a couple NDAs, which I can't talk about specifics. Uh, so uh, this is a situation that uh, I have no doubt. In five years, you can make an appointment through my butler and I'll see if I see it. <laughs> it's, it's phenomenal. I've done it once. I took four million to, to a billion dollars, so I'm not, I know. So am I just got the luck of the Irish? I don't know. We'll see. But it's a real deal. And if you have a chance to talk to an inventor, you'll find out. Well, look, uh, Tyrone, hopefully uh, after, you, after you do this and you're the world's next uh, Elon Musk, you'll still make time for us little people. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> you could go through my uh, secretary, but no, that's no problem at all. You know, we'll see what happens. But no, I really enjoy myself. This, I've just, I'm celebrating my 40th year in the industry uh, this month, and it's like, okay, it's, it's interesting, and I do stuff different, do slower, don't go to the many shows. There's one of the few I went to because of John Fennick. Uh, because a lot of guys, you know, they promote stuff that probably unpromotable, yeah. and they can yell louder than me and tell more fanciful stories. I just say, look, don't believe me. Here's what Global News said. Here's what UBC says. Here's what Apple says about our deal on the side here. And it's like, don't believe what I say, and figure it out for yourself. And, and I say, growing up in my household, my brother just retired a couple of years ago as a detective with the police force. He doesn't take any risk. So even though we're in the same household, complete different personalities, and, and, and thank goodness, because if he made a lot of money, I wouldn't be able to put up with him. Well, Tyrone, uh, so if, if I'm watching this, if I'm at home, I'm yeah. sitting on YouTube, yeah. 
maybe, uh, I don't know, eating some chips or something like that. And I'm like, okay, well, this sounds interesting. Yeah. I, I want to invest, but I, I can't tell if this guy is a genius or just... Uh... Oh, I'm a genius. You can tell him that. They don't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm a genius. So, <laughs> so, so what should I be watching out for over the next 12 months? Our website, uh, and I think it'll be much sooner than 12 months if I ask you. Go on our website, firstflorium.com, and our subsidiary with the, with the thermal electric device is pyrodelta.com. And there will be updated videos on, on how the uh, car is progressing, the uh, movie, you know, the transformation into internal combustion engine with our vehicle. But other news that I suspect, we've got a lot of people lined up in industries we didn't think about initially that have reached out to us. So, you know, there's a lot of interest. I wouldn't be surprised if, if there's news releases coming down the road. But unlike a lot of junior companies, we don't let anything come out of our office because, uh, you know, I don't want someone writing on Stockhouse or CEO.ca, the president said this, that, and the other. You know, if it's good news, it comes out. If it's bad news, it comes out. Because when people phone me for advice, I don't know whether they're pensioners or millionaires, and it doesn't matter to me. The pitch is the same. This is what we're doing. I'm the largest shareholder. I keep increasing my holdings. Doesn't mean I'm a bright guy, but obviously I believe in what we're doing, and, and this will be proven out. I, I don't have any worry about it. All right, Tyrone, this is certainly the most interesting interview we've had all week. Appreciate and uh, I appreciate you taking the time to sit down. And uh, we're definitely going to be watching what you guys do over the next year. Appreciate it. Thank you.